Welcome to online worship with Guilford College United Methodist Church today. I'm Pastor Susan, and I'm glad that you've set aside this time to join with us to offer praise and honor to God, hear from the Word, and communicate with the Lord by way of prayer and song. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we hope that you will be blessed and strengthened in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have a candle, you'd like to light it to begin our worship, let's do that now. Now enjoy this arrangement of all creatures of our God and King with the children singing. Of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, burning sun with golden beam, and silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him. Hi everyone, Hank Bullard here with Henry and Lucy, welcoming you to this morning's service at Guilford College United Methodist Church. Would you join the three of us for a word of prayer? Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for another day of life and health. We are living in a turbulent time filled with man-made and natural disasters which distract us from developing more intimacy with you in our lives. Open our hearts, minds, and souls to your message of peace through the parts of this service today, and may we take them with us in the coming days. In your holy name we pray and worship. Amen. Hello, everyone. Jordan and I are glad to be with you again today. So many of you have been so kind over the last few months to comment on how calm Jordan is and how peaceful this, this environment is, that we're together and just petting on her, and um, we appreciate that so much. But I wonder what this backyard environment would look like if we added all of God's creation to it, just taking the alphabet and starting off with it, a, a animal of each letter. What would that look like? A for alligators, B butterflies, C for cougar, D for deer, and the list could go on. What if we just added those to our backyard quilt? What would that look like? The Bible tells us that God speaks of a world in which all of his creation lives together in harmony 
not just all the animals, but all of his creation, all people of every age, race, nationality, the rich and the poor, all living together. That is a beautiful image and something that we certainly can hope for. But I think it's more than that. I wonder if it's something that, that God is calling us to live for now. See, I think peace is not just that break in where fighting is not happening. I think peace is something that we that lives and grows and spreads, that it's something that's active. In fact, Jesus tells us in the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John, in verse 33, he says, In me, in Jesus, you will have peace. You will have trouble in this world, but don't be afraid because I, Jesus, have already overcome the world. When Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he gives us hope for not just eternal life, but having the source of peace through him in order to live in this world and to make a difference. Everything that Jesus did brought about peace and it turned people to God. And I wonder if that's what Jesus is telling us, that everything that we do can be living in peace, but also turning people to Jesus. This week, yesterday, we had some painters in our house, and we had a lot of activity. We had a lot of people coming and going, doors opening and closing, plastic here and there, lots of noises and sounds, and Jordan was a little restless with all of that activity in her house, and at one point, the only place she wanted to be to find peace was curled up in my lap, touching me, close to me, cuddled up, safe, secure, and at peace. And as I sat there with with her in my lap, I thought, what an image this is with our relationship with Jesus. Isn't that what he wants? Is for us to draw so close to him. We're like those children who curl up in his lap, who cuddle up because we know that he is the source of our safety and our peace. And when we seek out that kind of relationship with Jesus and we are filled with his peace, it overflows into the lives of the people around us, and the ripple effect changes the world. This week as a family, I, I would encourage you to discuss how each of you are growing closer to Jesus and getting filled up with his peace. And also talk about ways how each of you can Use that peace that overflows out of your life, Jesus' peace, to make a difference in this world. Let's pray together. Dear Almighty and peaceful and loving God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who came to give us peace. Help us to seek him, to draw close to Jesus, to be filled with his peace. And Father, help us to see ways that we can share that peace into this world, to change it, so that we on earth become that picture of what we hope for, all of your creation, living in harmony and peace together, and all of your creation, drawing glory to your Son, Jesus, and to you, God, as our Father. In your precious Son's name, and by your Spirit we pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you for the participation of the children leading us in the Lord's Prayer. I have several announcements to make. Uh, first of all, you know that in person on Wednesdays, we meet right here in the sanctuary to pray for the needs of our family 
and give God the praise for all that's going on. We meet at 12 noon. Uh, you do not have to make a reservation, but please bring your mask, and we'll see you right here if you are able. Our worship takes place anytime on YouTube and on Sunday mornings at 8.45 on the front lawn or in the evening at 7 p.m. on Sundays in the shade on the back lawn. Bring your chair, your mask, and worship with us with social distancing. We're grateful how, for how God is working among our church family. With the COVID-19 virus all around us, we need God's strength and protection every minute of the day. We're praying for Jim Wilson, who is Donna Garcia's father in hospice care, for Pat Gunn, who is recovering from knee surgery, and Gwen Parker, Myra Andres' mom. We pray for Michael Eagle, who has uh, an aneurysm near the heart and will need surgery. Uh, we pray for Patty Elkins, who's had some health concerns, and Galia Miasa, Gloria Brown's mother. Let's also remember to pray daily in, uh, for those in leadership in our country. Protection for all of our essential workers from the virus, for the struggle to end racism, and for the families, students, and teachers in their preparation for virtual study this fall. We also want to remember those who are in the path of Hurricane Isaias. Let us pray. Holy God, you made the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the shining stars. You created all of the animals, those that swim, climb, walk, and fly. We are thankful for your earth and the beauty of the creation. During this sermon series, we thank you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity to focus on the birds, the soil, and the trees that praise and honor you with their very being. At the same time, we're aware of the hurricane coming to the Atlantic coast, and we pray for your mercy and protection for all those in the path of this storm. We trust you that your power is able to tame the mightiest storm and even a fierce virus. We thank you that you created each one of us and you gave us the ability to know you and develop in our relationship with you and those around us. Your healing power has lifted up and strengthened many in our church family and we are grateful. Help us to be tuned in to your voice, your call and your work in the world around us. Today, Lord, Give your peace to those who are suffering from the coronavirus. We ask you for continued research and development for a solution to this disease. Be with our brothers and sisters battling cancer and those with upcoming surgery. We pray for those who are struggling with loneliness and depression. Give direction to those in leadership in our country. Help us in the struggle to talk about our cultural and racial differences and to become the bridge to connecting with one another in faith, hope, love, and peace available in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We especially pray today for the teachers, professors, families, and students who are dealing with evolving plans for beginning the school year. Pour out your grace on the preschool here at our church as well. Bless your servant, Pastor Jeremy, and his family this week as they connect together as a family while on vacation. For all of us, all of this, Lord, we pray confidently and with faith in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for your faithful gifts to our church. 
as part of our worship, you can always feel free to make your donation online at our website. You can mail it in if that's the best for you. Or we also have a locked box outside the office where you can leave your offering. Thank you. Now let's join in listening to Charles Petty and Folk Psalm as they sing Psalm of Creation's Praise based on Psalm 148. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding. 
the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Continuing on with the outdoor series of sermons, I have the opportunity to guide you in thinking about all God's creatures, great and small, our animal friends. I can only imagine all the stories that you all could share with me about your favorite animals, your pets in particular. I've had the pleasure to meet Jordan, Donna Ford's beautiful English cream golden retriever, who brings us the children's sermons each Sunday online. The dog's patience and calm while Donna tells the story and prays mesmerizes me. I especially like when the furry beauty looks longingly and lovingly up at her owner. Another church member introduced me to Coco, a golden doodle dog with the utmost personality and affection for everyone she meets. I'm not quite sure how her owner keeps up with her energy, But she sure is friendly and speaks the language of welcoming and accepting everyone she meets. Animals surely are a joy for human beings. They provide companionship, affection, and in the case of many, the dog initiates a walk outside of the house twice a day, which really helps the owner with his or her health. Cat lovers also derive a great deal of contentment from these independent creatures who become an integral part of their family. The cat owner can describe his or her pet in the most loving and often comical manner. My mom's cat, for example, is her most faithful companion, and they know each other's ways. They accompany one another all day, and mom comforts the cat during thunderstorms. Since several weeks ago, I knew that I would be preaching about God's beloved animals. So I've been more aware of the news stories and anecdotes about them. Every day, there are at least one or two stories about animals on the news. These stories pull us out of the doldrums. They let us move our thoughts off of ourselves, and they probably cause us to laugh. One day in July, they showed a kangaroo being picked up by the police on a street in Fort Lauderdale. Was he disobeying the law? Not exactly. It's just that exotic animals cannot be allowed to run around the streets. They could hurt themselves or hurt someone else. The owner of the kangaroo was apologetic, but his hopping mate had somehow gotten out and he just couldn't capture him. 
The police took him to the stables, and the darling Kanga was waiting to be transferred to Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. 125 animals are named in the Bible. Sheep are the most commonly mentioned, but there are a lot of other ones named too. Some that I've never heard of, like the Adex in Deuteronomy 14.5. A light-colored antelope, native to the Saharan desert. Insects and reptiles are referred to in the Bible as well, like the vipers that were mentioned in the passage that we had read today. Since my brother works at the zoo, we sometimes have meals together with mom, and we enjoy funny and interesting tales about the animals there. Believe me, it's a full-time task keeping peace and order at the zoo. I'd like to tell you about God's amazing creature, the Aldabra land tortoise. At the Greenville Zoo, they named him Baba. He's from Africa, off the coast of the Indian Ocean, and these tortoises are also found in Madagascar. He was described to me as weighing 450 pounds, about 60 years old, and with a very laid-back temperament. I believe God shows us that we can slow down and enjoy life when we observe how turtles live. When the temperature outside is going to go down to 50 degrees or less, this huge animal needs to be moved into his hut where the temperature is kept at the tortoise's favorite temperature, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Getting him to move to this hut is a difficult challenge, and since he moves at a very slow pace, it would be impossible to get, them, get him there before it got too cold out in the evening. So the zookeeper's technique is to scratch his elbows, which encourages him to extend his legs and lift up his body. At that time, the other workers are slipping beneath him fire hoses so that they will be able to move him, lifting him. It takes at least five strong adults to move him. Seeing him eat is another delight. A huge wash basin is placed in front of him. It has all kinds of fresh fruits and vegetables like lettuce, carrots, mangoes. And the tortoise moves his long neck into that basin and begins his delectable meal. In his natural environment, he uses his neck and long tongue to grab and capture the food sources on trees, rocks, and bushes. I am told that Bubba has been quite active in our Carolina climate of 90 degrees or above. Summer is his favorite time, and the hotter, the better. Did I tell you how much he loves the deep mud hole in his area? Try moving him out of there when it's going to get cool at night. Is the main purpose of our scripture today to draw our attention to the animals? What can we glean from Isaiah? First of all, the prophet Isaiah is pointing the reader to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Jesse was the father of David. And new life, green growth, is described as sprouting out from a cut-down stump. That would be the family line of the Messiah. We who read the words today immediately think about the Messiah. But the original hearers of Isaiah's prophecy would have tried to imagine who would be their Messiah, that great leader to bring peace and harmony to their world. Who would be so anointed by the Spirit of the Lord so as to bring understanding, counsel, wisdom, and power? Isaiah's words for the people of Judah would point them to hope in God's ability 
to keep them in his power. And this was comforting and motivated their faith in God. They eagerly waited for the Messiah who would bring peace, justice, and harmony to the land. The images that Isaiah uses to create a visual aid for us to picture God's kingdom in perfect peace and harmony are animals such as the wolf, who would normally attack a lamb in order to have a tasty meal, the leopard, who would be taking a siesta with a goat, which we know would never work out in ordinary circumstances, because goat meat for a leopard is like a delicious taco for me. A lion that would be with a calf is also not a natural happening, and an innocent and vulnerable child who would be there among them, leading and guiding the animals, how strange. Nothing happens to the child. He or she is not screaming out of fear of these animals. It's an unusual and very unlikely scene, but a scene that the Creator God could arrange. Isaiah the prophet wrote that in Christ, the cycle of life will be changed when his kingdom comes on earth. We know that when the Messiah, Jesus Christ, brought a new way of life to earth, when he came, his ability as the Son of God to touch people spiritually, opening their eyes to physical, uh, to the truths of God's hope, love, and forgiveness, as well as offering physical healing and provision, allowed for people to receive new life. And now, Jesus Christ allows us to begin to love ourselves as God made us in his image. Love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. In 1839, a Quaker artist, Edward, Edward Hicks, painted a representation of these verses from Isaiah. The animals are portrayed in detail and represented as one big happy family. They seem calm and loving. The Christ child in this painting is placed as the little one who is leading the animals and Mary, his mother, not far away from him. The snakes mentioned in our scripture passage do not appear in the painting, and that pleases me. Although I know God can control those creatures, I personally don't like them. The artist truly believed in God's peace coming to our earth and included in the background of the painting an island in which William Penn is making a treaty of friendship. In 1682, with the Lenape Native American people, also called the Delaware Indians by European settlers. The colors in the painting are somewhat muted, yet realistic, which would have been typical of American folk art of that period. Another artist, John August Swanson, in 1984 created a more colorful work of art based on the same scripture and with the same title, the peaceable kingdom. With even more varieties of God's animals included in this picture, which is a serigraph, a printmaking form of art, he has a visual retelling of this biblical vision in which we're enabled to see the story through new eyes and rediscover the power and meaning of the story for our own lives. The artist challenges us to look at our lives and re-examine our worldview and see if we're living as we should live. Again, in this painting, it seems to me like the snakes are omitted. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
This is what we should strive for, and by God's grace it can be accomplished. I wonder if peace and harmony among human beings can truly be a main goal for us in the church. There are artists, musicians, composers, preachers, and politicians who have written and performed pieces that carried the message of peace and harmony. In 1982, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder taped a smash duet, which became the biggest hit of Wonder's career, spending seven weeks atop Billboard's Hot 100 list. It was called Ebony and Ivory. And the lyrics went like this. Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect harmony. Side by side on my piano keyboard. Oh, Lord, why don't we? We all know that people are the same wherever we go. There's good and bad in everyone. We learn to live, we learn to give each other what we need to survive together alive. Ebony and Ivory live together in perfect harmony, side by side on my piano keyboard. Oh Lord, why don't we? Ebony, Ivory, living in perfect harmony. Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder felt that the message of people getting along and living at peace across borders and races was so important that they invested the time and money into making that song together. We in the church must focus on accepting and loving others so that we are working towards creating God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Once we know God, Christ and have his peace in our lives, we can overcome sin and attitudes which exclude some people from our lives. We should intentionally look for friendships and connections with people who are different from ourselves. When we do so, our lives are enriched. We learn from one another and we become united we even start to look out for one another. Now some of you are wondering why I haven't said much about the snakes being so close to the precious child that he or she could be harmed. I tend to avoid things I don't like. Most of us are like that. The snakes scare and threaten me. And it's challenging for me to consider what God would want, why God would want them there next to that child. But isn't that God's point through the message of the prophet Isaiah? Those most difficult and hard things to overcome can become peaceful and calm in the spiritual and natural world where Christ is king. As human beings, we must face some of the most challenging hurdles in our relationships and allow God to become part of our struggle to resolve the differences. If race doesn't seem to be a challenge to us, it could be because we've not spent time to get to know the difficulty that another person has had to overcome. Perhaps we haven't ever felt rejection because of the color of our skin or the accent with which we speak. Let's open our minds and hearts to how God's kingdom should be here on earth and let's work towards it. The United Methodist Church and our conference feel so strongly about taking a stand against inequality that ending racism has been set as a main focus. Signs which say, it's time, end racism now, will be available at our church this week. The signs have a cost associated with them of $8 and can easily be placed on your lawn. You can get one Monday through Thursday at the church office between the hours of 9 and 12. Or you can email me, and I will meet you at the church to give you a sign. 
It could be that where you live, you're not allowed to place a sign on your lawn. And in that case, I wonder if you would like to sign up to receive an email, which will include a daily prayer about racism and living out our faith from the UMC Board of Discipleship, covenanting to pray and becoming that bridge of peace among people, no matter what their race or origin happens to be, is a very powerful tool in this struggle. You will be able to find the link at our website. The animals in God's perfect kingdom will be at peace with one another. Let us strive to do this here on earth as we imitate Christ's example and become more perfect in love. Let us pray. Let there be peace on earth, Lord, and let this peace begin with me, with God who is our creator, we are all children, Lord. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, Lord, and let it Begin with me. Amen. For our next steps, first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us in worship today. Thank you for a great team who works together in harmony, really, to bring this online worship to all of us. As I mentioned, Pastor Jeremy is on vacation this week, but the staff and I are here to serve you. You can also let me know through an email if you'd like a sign. Remember that we can gather here in the sanctuary with social distancing to pray on Wednesdays at noon. Receive now this, the benediction. Lord, make each of us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. This we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord.